What's up, cuties? Before I get into my recap, let me say this. Carlos King and your production team, if you guys don't focus on the core five, because we do not want to see Martell Holt next season, if there will be one. But if you guys don't focus on the core five, you may as well wrap this thing up and throw it in the trash. What a trash, boring episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Chit chat with QT. Chit chat with QT. Chit chat. Chit chat. Chit chat with QT. But let's go ahead and get into this video, cuties. First of all, shout out to the Let Loose Lounge. A time was had last night. Thank you guys so much for joining me uh, in that. And also, make sure you're following me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Patreon, and absolutely follow me on YouTube and make sure you are subscribed. But let's get into this episode. It picks up with Destiny and the yes man, the sunny child, Moses. And let me say this real quick. For me, two things can be true. I don't care for Destiny and the way that she's moved in the past. And I don't care for Sonny, married to Moses or not. I don't care for the way that Sonny is currently moving. And I'll get into that soon. But Moses and Destiny are still talking. She said that he's a liar and that stuff can be seen. And when she said that, she's talking about those receipts that she may have of Moses via text message and all of that. Uh, Moses had the uh, destiny in my Wanda's voice. But he had the audacity to say that Destiny never came to see him. And Destiny just looked at him like he was crazy. She said for eight months, she went to go see him every other weekend. Now, what more did this Negro want? Eight months? And why wasn't he traveling to see Destiny since he was so concerned about the time that they were spending together. And here he go again, child, in this scene, talking about Destiny missing his birthday. Newsflash real quick to Sonny. Destiny wasn't his side chick because look, the side chicks are not invited to birthday parties. And the man is definitely not upset where he has said that, damn, five, six times by now. Uh, if there were multiple women, Destiny was the main chick because that's who he wanted there. But Moses goes on to gaslight Destiny when she asked him, uh, how am I going to pay my bills and all of that? Because you wasn't paying them. And he had the nerve to say, why would I take care of a woman that's not coming to see me? Dude, y'all were in a long distance relationship and every other weekend for eight straight months, she was coming to see you. What the hell is Moses talking about? Seriously. She said when she asked him to reciprocate and come see her, it was an issue. And Destiny, he wanted you to be the only one chasing him. That's why he didn't come. He did want Destiny to court him, period. But she said that her staying at home and working meant keeping a roof over her and her son's head. And I guess old Moses wanted Destiny to be homeless. 
How can you have a problem with that? When they started whatever they started, he knew he lived one place and she lived another. He also knew that she had a child. So forget my own responsibilities and focus just on you, Moses. No, ma'am. She said that he was supposed to help with that as far as contributing to helping her with her bills or whatever the case may be, and that he didn't. And guess what? He really didn't deny that when she said it. Moses, just like Martell, is not a good liar, okay? But for me, any man that's taking up my time will most definitely have to show interest and pinch in some type of way. Because look, you're not going to come over here and hump up and down on me. And the only thing you leave me with is a wet ass. No, sir. Uh, you get up and go and I'm looking at a stack of bills. Whether I can pay them or not. What's that old song, y'all? No romance without finance. Bill collectors at my door. What can you do for me? Ain't nothing going on but the rent, period. But anyway, Moses said that Destiny wasn't showing him time and attention. And Destiny said that he stopped showing up as a man and she did pull away. She said that his decision to pursue Sonny was a get back. And it was. I am not going to bend over backwards for you and stroke your ego just to make you think that you are the prize. No, sir. Destiny even got a little emotional and said that Moses stabbed her in her back and I am going to agree. He did. His wife, Sonny, said he had many women to choose from. He was messing around with several of them. And guess what? Moses could have chosen any one of them. But he was hurt that Destiny chose self and he used Sonny to hurt Destiny back, period. But Destiny then says that Moses love bombed her and named his business after her baby law. He said he named his business Justice and he said business, okay, B-I-D-N-E-S-S. -S. But he said he named his business Justice. And Destiny said justice was the name of the baby that they were going to have. Baby, I took a hard pause, okay? I really, really did. He sat there and did what? Just look stupid at that. Again, he's not a good liar, and he did not deny that. And in my opinion, Moses is trifling. Any man that will go that far discussing future kids and naming businesses and all of that, and then marry this girl's producer, ain't shit. That's just my opinion. He's a master manipulator, and guess what? Sonny is also a master manipulator when it comes to Moses. It's giving mother and son. I'll get into that when I get to their scene. But Moses goes on to say, uh, and he also tried to down Destiny in this. He said that she wasn't in a financial and emotional place, really, for him to continue. And I'm going to go ahead and call bullshit because his main complaint was she wasn't available for him. She didn't come to his birthday. He ain't say nothing about her money or her emotional state. So yeah, Moses, go on head on somewhere with that. He said that the weight of what she had going on was too heavy. And guess what? In comes Sonny, light as a, a butterfly child. Ain't nothing holding Sonny down. And Sonny was able to stroke Moses' ego enough for him to go ahead and marry her. That's my thoughts. But Destiny told him, you know what? You are fine and broken. And I have to agree. Broken English as well. 
but she said that she made the right decision by saying goodbye to Moses, and she did. She really, really did. Destiny said that she found out two days before Moses and Sonny got married. That's bullshit to me. And look, even Sonny and Moses knew that they were foul because they felt obligated to let her know two days before they got married. That's crazy. But Destiny tells him, you know, you and Sonny, y'all can go ahead and have a good life. He said, we is, I-Z, having a good life. <laughs> Destiny said, okay, then you are dismissed. He said, no, you're dismissed. No, you dismissed. Go ahead on, Moses. And Destiny told him before he got up to walk away, child, you wanted to be my girlfriend. And I had to say straight facts. Look, it is a lot of men out here like that. And ladies, if you are doing it, I would suggest stopping. For me, women are the prize. He that find a wife finds a good thing in most cases. I'm not going to say that's what happened with Sonny and Moses because I think Sonny was the one that orchestrated all of that when it comes to them getting married. But women, you are the prize. And just looking at this, Moses definitely feels like he's the prize and the highest bidder is going to be the winner. Just my thoughts. But she sent him on, on his way and uh, she sat there and continued on with her drink and um look the man is just what he is that's just it that's all sonny for me was willing to overlook a whole lot number one this man was involved in someone that was a friend associate however she wants to slice and dice it the first time that sonny laid eyes on moses was through destiny and Sonny feels like she won because why he picked her what's the word that's used for that she's a pygmisha that's how I feel um Destiny also said as he was walking away that this man was trying to get her pregnant from day one that ain't no side chick Sonny period but that's how that scene ended guys it was a lot of gas lighting for me and I'm not down with it. But this next thing, guys, was Tisha and Trisha. Tisha met her at the gym. Trisha is going to train Tisha. Tisha said that she don't know her that well. She met Trisha twice, but Trisha's body is bodying, and she does have a nice body. But they make small talk. Tisha asked if she knew Martell. Storyline. In comes these overproduced fake-ish scenes for me. Uh, Tisha said that she always heard that Martel was the good brother and Montez was the bad one. And look, Martel was bad as well. His ass was arrested for that ATM heist, allegedly. Um, so they're both bad. But Trisha said, well, maybe when Martel got to college... You know, he became good. But other than that, she's always known Martel to be a bad guy. Um, she went on to say that Marceau knows the ex-husband, who's not really an ex yet because Trisha is still married. Uh, Trisha said that Marceau does not know her current future husband. And child, for me, just go ahead and get divorced, and then let's talk about the future when it comes to Ken. Uh, they spoke on Trisha's situationship because Tisha was like, oh, you're engaged. And she went on to tell her, no, it's complicated, all of that. They also spoke about the ex-husband and that Trisha nor him have filed for divorce. And Tisha in her confessional said that Maybe that man don't want to sign the papers. He may not want a divorce. How is he going to sign if they have not filed? I feel they are talking a lot about the ex-child, the soon-to-be ex, whatever he is. And for me, for this to make sense, we need to see him on the show. Otherwise, 
I feel like they shouldn't continue to bring him up. She's still married, period. But they discuss meeting up later on with everyone else, and they then discuss Nell Fletcher. Trisha said that Nell is family, and she said that she was told by her older generation that they were family. Tisha goes on to shade Nell in her confessional and said that Trisha is right. Nell is of the older generation. And I just had to say, what is up with the age shaming? What, Nell is probably 10 years or so older than Tisha? Do people not want to get older? I mean, Tisha, what would you rather die than to be Nell Fletcher's age? I just don't get it. But Tisha did say that Nell looks good, uh, but she's knocking on 60's door. Same thing that Martell said last week. It's just not a good look to me that they are age shaming, but nothing surprises me when it comes to love in Maritonsville. But they talk about how Trish went to school with Courtney and then she met Stormy. Stormy did her hair and they are close. Uh, Trisha said that, you know, that was possibly going to be an issue, but she wanted to get to know Tisha for herself. And I guess going forward, they should be good. For me, this was a filler scene. It seems very put together-ish by the producers. Just like the scene that I'll discuss in a minute between Stormy, Trisha, and Martell. Um, yeah, it's just awkward. The connections aren't connecting for me. They're trying to put these folks together, act like they knew so-and-so from here or there. And none of those relationships obviously were established relationships or friendships. So as I said at the start of this video... Carlos, you need to go and focus on the core five or you need to go ahead and hang Love and Marriage Huntsville up. But let's go ahead and get into this next scene, cuties. This was the pretty in pink sleepover pajama party between Mel and her real friends. So there was Dr. Shanita, Lauren, Brittany, and Tamika. They all were over Mel's home, and they are there to enjoy each other. Now, Mel said, having been married for so many years, most of her friends are married friends, and she really just wanted to get together with her single friends. Mel had it laid out. The decor included her 7th Avenue products. They also had these awesome looking drinks. Oh my goodness, they look so good. And then she also had pictures of the times that she spent with her friends. I thought that was very, very thoughtful. It really was. But she wanted to pamper them. She said that, you know, they are genuine and they are solid and amazing friends. So they started it off. They toasted to real friends real conversation, and real men. Mel said that her friends are always trying to set her up. She spoke about the water project in Africa that her and Shanita will be doing. And Shanita said that her work in Africa really is her purpose. And if you've been following Shanita, you know that she's been doing a damn thing over in Africa for a couple years, several years. But Mel also spoke on her community work in the States. And she said that she's excited to take that work internationally. Shanita said that she feels it would be good for Mel's soul. And then they can also find Mel a man child while they are over there in Africa. Shanita is hilarious to me. But she said that Mel always tries to deflect and said that Mel is a tad bit picky. Uh, they talked about the guy that was missing a side tooth or teeth child. Maybe it was both sides. And Mel was like, yeah, no. He was missing a side tooth. And I think it was Brittany who said, look, if he's not taking care of his teeth, he's not going to take care of her. 
I don't know if it was Brittany or Tamika, one of them, but they definitely got a point. Uh, Shanita said, maybe the tooth on the side don't really matter. And when she said that, I cackled. You know what I mean? Because, look, you can get an implant or two. But Shanita said that that was person number one. She said person number two was also African. And Mel told her that, you know, he lived a little too far away. Mel then said he sent her a picture and he had on some pants that could be somebody that is a great uncle. I had to cackle again and I also Google just for the sake of this video. We all know how the great uncles look, but I wanted to include a picture and no man. If this is how that man's pants was looking and all of that, I don't blame Mel. Shanita said he had money, he was divorced, had one or two kids, and she just didn't understand why Mel was tripping about the pants. Mel said, look, I need somebody with a little swag. And Shanita said, money can buy swag. And it can. I'm sure Mel just wasn't feeling the guy at all. And look, all money ain't good money. But Shanita said that Mel is picky and needs to lower her expectations, possibly. And Mel let her know, look, my friends need to take into consideration what I've been through and what she's still going through. She said that she's still on her healing journey. And she also has to make sure that her children are healed as well and that they are good. Shanita asked her if she thinks other people contribute to her not being able to heal, and Mel said yes. She said, you know Martell was still stalking me, showing up when I was out on dates and all of that, and that was after we been divorced. And then they showed the clip of Martell Child having the audacity and the time to pull up on Mel while she's out on a date, sticking a camera in that man's face. Just crazy. Mel said that Martel is unhinged and you know, you never know what you're going to get next. Sad thing is, she hasn't seen anything yet, in my opinion, because wait until she's healed enough to really start dating and someone comes in her life that leads to marriage, and that Negro Martell is going to lose it, for real. But anyway, Mel said that she also considers other people and what she's bringing them into. And the fact is, what they just showed, which was Martell storming her on a date, while he probably had coleslaw uh, sitting in a car some shit. Crazy. But she need to ask Mel... Um, it was a really good question. She said, so you have PTSD? And Mel said, yes. And that's really deep, guys. People don't realize that you can suffer from PTSD from several different situations that was traumatic and that you experienced in your life. So I'm glad Shanita asked that question and also Mel did answer it honestly. And look, for me, every time Martel does something else, he reopens the wound that Mel is trying hard to heal from. Mel said that she probably picks apart things when it comes to men. And, you know, she's just not really ready. And I say take your time. Because even when you meet somebody else, you got to relearn them. You know, go through the whole motions. Check out his mental. How does he handle situations and all of that? And if you've been in situations that, again, were traumatic, you're just not rushing to get involved with somebody else. So kudos to Mel. But they sat down to eat and finish their drinks. And Shanita, again, gave some good advice. She said that her and Mel's friendship is a real friendship. She don't even know everything that's going on on social media. And she said that when they talk, they don't get a chance to talk about all of the things that happen on social media. So she didn't even really know that Martell showed up on these dates and all of that. And she asked Mel, 
Do you feel like you cannot date because of Martel and his actions? And Mel says she has felt like that. And look, I get what Shanita is saying. Uh, Mel can't let Martel hold her as a prisoner, even mentally. But we must admit, it has to be extremely hard dealing with Martel, dealing with his antics, dealing with the BS that the bird comes out and says, yeah, that's a lot. But Shanita, again, this girl is a friend to Mel. She gave her some more uh, great advice. She said that for Mel's on personal healing, stop putting yourself in position where you are walking back into the hurt. She also said, stop allowing people to contribute to his nonsense. So stop allowing those people in your space. Uh, Carlos King, the number one uh, contributor, in my opinion, by allowing Martel Holt to remain on this show and also contributing by putting money in Martel's pockets in spite of everything that Martel has done. He is being rewarded for nonsense. Shanita also said that if the table has to include the person that's breaking me down, then I do not need to sit at that table anymore. Baby, a whole word. She said a whole word. And she said also, people need to pick a side. I agree with that, okay? Carlos has not picked a side. Uh, we really haven't seen the others pick a side, and it's time. It really is. Carlos has done nothing to, number one, ensure Mel's safety because anything can set Martel off. So she's not safe with him being, for instance, in the house in Houston. She's not safe if she got to sit down on a reunion stage with him. She's not safe if by chance she want to go film with other people. But since they haven't picked the side, she has to opt out. That's crazy to me. We also heard Kimmy say that Martel has talked negatively to them as well. So it's time for Carlos to pick a side. Damn, the side is what's right, Carlos. It really shouldn't be hard. Does Martel have to physically hurt Mel or somebody else? Or does Carlos want Mel to do exactly what Shanita told her to get on up from the table? And guess what? If Mel get up from the table and leave the show, Carlos don't have to make a choice, does he? Anyway, Mel said three years later, she's still trying to release herself from that toxic relationship. And she also said that she feels like her married friends. And I think in that moment, she is talking about Tisha, Marceau, Kimmy, Maurice. She said her married friends need to pick a side. I agree. No matter what they've gone through, uh, as far as the back and forth between, let's say, Mel and Tisha or whomever, uh, that definitely does not mount up to what we see that's going on and has gone on with Martel Holt. But as far as the scene, I loved it. Uh, sisterhood and real friends are so very important. And this scene lined up for me with the earlier seasons of Love and Marriage Huntsville. It wasn't fake. It wasn't forced. It wasn't rehearsed. None of that. Okay? So I enjoyed it. Uh, it was the best scene of the episode for me. Uh, speaking of fake, child. Next up is the scene with Stormy, Trisha, and Martell. If y'all don't go away from me with this in my Phaedra Parks voice, this just was a mess. This is going to be probably a little quick, but this is another producer-inspired scene that failed miserably, in my opinion. 
Stormy invites Trisha and Martell over. Martell shows up. It was very weird. Um, what were the rose petals for? Why of all people, especially with the charges at the time, because Martell did mention jail in this scene with Stormy and Trisha, why of all people would Stormy want Martell to have any involvement in her lovers and friends gala. It's sad to me, especially when women overlook major issues, you know, like DV, and to try to still make a man look desirable. Martel is going to be modeling at this event. Come on now. And for Stormy, my opinion, to mix the mess of Martell with anything that she has going on on the show or off is not a good look to me. Her brand is for women, women who may have experienced DV. And here you go, choosing this guy that is plastered over our TV screens and social media pages and all of that that was arrested. I don't understand it unless she just does not value her audience. I don't get that at all. And until Martell does the well-needed work on himself, this cast, the producers, and Carlos need to cut them off. That's just it. But anyway, the big thing with this scene is that Trisha and Martell know each other or do they? That is the big question. Could they? Yes. I don't know. The shit was so phony for me. Uh, it was just like, who cares? Another attempt to paint Martell as a ladies man. Trisha said that it pissed her off, that he acted like he didn't know her. Uh, it was just like watching a Tyler Perry play for me. I don't know if Trisha is just not comfortable in the reality TV space but she looks very awkward. We all know that she talks funny and it was just weird. They all sitting there making these googly eyes at each other and Stormy tilting her head to the side. Something ain't right, what's really going on? And if Stormy and Trisha are as close as they say that they are, we know, at least I do, know that they would have had previous conversations before this show when it comes to Trisha and Martell. So if the producers are trying to make this into a storyline, it's failing miserably. Somebody in my Let Loose Lounge said last night, it was really like uh, watching a Tubi movie. It really, really was. It was bad acting between all three of them. Uh, and it just wasn't authentic. Martell comes to the house, Courtney is there, but he with the baby, but he don't even take the time to come in and say, what up, bro? How you doing? No, because they trying to get this phony fake scene done. That's what that was. So um, it is what it is with that. I think I've said enough. Uh, yeah, that is the big to do. Did Martell smash or not? Nah? And when it comes to Martell, I wouldn't be shocked if he did. Next up, cuties, is Sonny and Moses. And the first thing that I noticed was Moses walking in with his pants sagging. Like, really? But anyway, they are meeting to discuss Moses' meeting with Destiny. And the first question that Sonny asked was, how was Destiny dressed? Not, how did it go? Was it awkward? No. She wanted to know how Destiny was dressed. And for me, that screamed insecurity. Moses said, I didn't see everything. But she had on makeup. She had on a tight dress. She had on high heels. Negro, you saw everything, obviously. And I don't know about you guys, but remember, Moses looked Destiny up and down when she walked into that restaurant. Sonny said, oh. So she was looking cute, and Moses answered quickly and said yes. He did tell Sonny that things got heated 
between he and Destiny. He said that Destiny said that he wasn't the man she wanted him to be. Said that they, meaning Moses and Sonny, stabbed Destiny in her back by them getting married. He also said that Destiny feels like they were talking while she and Moses were together. Sonny asked, uh, did you clear that up? And he said, yeah. I told her, my wife, look, she got that man trained to say wife, you hear me? But he said, I told her that my wife, we did have your best interest. Then he let Sonny know that Destiny said she was my friend. And Sonny said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Destiny basically don't know nothing about me. She don't know who my friends are. She don't know who I was dating, Moses. Uh, she don't know nothing about me. And if she did, then she would be a friend. Now, look, I think Sonny was dating who she ended up married. That's just me. She said that Destiny was never her friend. And that was Destiny's mishap. She said Destiny blurred the lines between reality and yeah, they are just not friends, period. That's the reality. Sonny said in her confessional that there was never any give and take when it comes to her and Destiny. It was always her giving to Destiny, pouring into Destiny, giving Destiny advice, and Destiny came out and said, child, that some of that advice was, girl, you need to leave him. But she also said, look, Destiny never poured into my cup. But this is where I got a little peeved at Sonny. Moses said that Destiny was mad because of all of the years that her and him were friends. And Sonny said, all those years, you were a sad chick. You was being flown in, humped on, and flown right back out. Now, this is my question, Sonny. How do you know that? How do you know? But she said, let's not act like it was some grave, long relationship. And you would think Destiny was dating Sonny. She was not involved. And the only thing that Sonny knows is what Moses told her. And Moses was singing a different tune to Destiny. Uh, most men will say the worst to the new victim in order to get them. So do I think that Moses talked down about Destiny to Sonny? Yes. But Sonny is just a little too strong with the SKR for me. And it's bogus. The disrespect that she has for Destiny, it's like Destiny screwed her man. I just don't get why Sonny is so angry. And the shady moves that her and Moses made do get the side eye. And while Sonny is saying all of this, Moses is just sitting there. Yup, you right, yup, yup. Come on now. That man was acting like he was Sonny's son and not Sonny's husband. But Sonny said Destiny was one of the ones in his call log while the main chick was away. Uh, I got another question. Who was the main chick? Was it you, Sonny? Seriously, I want to know. Because the way that she said that, it was like she was okay with him fooling around with all these other women because she was away. Possibly producing Destiny. That's what is given. How is Sonny going this hard for a man that she said had several other women, including her? And the reason why Sonny is going so hard, in my opinion, is because she won the prize. That's it. That's all. But she said Destiny shouldn't act like they had this 15-year relationship of Destiny getting to know him. I'm going to say it again. Let Moses say that. I know that that's her husband now, but she don't know what was done and said between Destiny and Moses. And who are you, Sonny, to come in and define what they had? That's why I think Sonny forced herself on Moses, forced marriage on Moses, 
all of that. That's just my opinion. I think Sonny told him, hey, let's make this money. And I think he was down for it. She's just a little too mean spirited when it comes to destiny for me. But she also said destiny was put in a hotel room and sent right back on out after the weekend. Look, child, those are fighting words where I come from. Like I said, I don't rock with females like this. I'm sorry. Sunny is insecure. She's bossy. She's a mean girl. She's a pygmisha. She's all of that. And it's not warranted. You came after destiny, okay? Whether you married the man or not. But she goes on to say that Destiny shouldn't have been in a relationship anyway with everything that she had going on at the time. Moses said that Destiny said he's not healed. And newsflash, Moses, most men aren't. They just take their unhealed ass right on to the next victim, child. And it seems like that's what you've done, in my opinion. But Sonny then says that she sees now that she probably should have been there talking about the meeting between Destiny and Moses. And I'm just going to say this. None of y'all should be here. This is not a good look for Sonny. It's not a good look for Moses. And it's not a good look for Destiny since Sonny and Moses are now married. None of y'all should be on our TV screen. Who wants to be known for this? Why get on TV with this? I just don't get it. We're going to have to discuss that a little further, guys. Uh, maybe in a power hour. But, uh, yeah, I just wasn't feeling it. But Moses then tells Sonny that, oh, by the way, I forgot to wear my wedding ring. Sonny said, how convenient. She then said, so it was looking like you were on a whole date then. You was on a date with your ex-girlfriend. Now, Sonny, I'm confused because you just called her his ex-girlfriend, but a couple minutes earlier, you said she was a sad chick while the main chick was away. What is it? We know what it was. She was his girlfriend. I cannot. She then says, you know, she was looking for that ring. You should have put it in her face like I'm going to do. Girl, she just weird to me. Look, I am talking about the show. I don't know the lady personally, which means I don't dislike her on a personal level. But the vibes that she's given on Love and Marriage Huntsville, no ma'am. No ma'am. It's a little weird to me. But Moses said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, wife. And uh, <laughs> baby, like I say, that man say, my wife. My wife, my wife. I bet you Sonny sat there with him for a good 15, 20 minutes to make sure he got that. But he said, I love you. Just know that. And she said, I know because you chose me out of all those other women. Girl, if that is not cringe. Pick Misha, that's the definition. I don't care if you had 30 women. I won. And look, Destiny and all of the other women, Moses really did them a favor, period. Let Sonny take her prize and ride on off into the sunset. That's just it, that's all. It was just too much for me. Oh my goodness. And they are tearing her ass up again on social media. It's not cool. Even if they are married, this attitude and all of this that she's saying about destiny, no, nah, that's wrong. And as I said earlier, two things can be true. I still dislike the way Destiny has moved, the way Destiny turned on Mel, all of the above. Talking about she know where the bones are buried and all of that. Yeah, I still dislike Destiny. But I dislike Sonny's ass as well. That's just it. But the last scene was a snooze fest. Trisha and Ken, and they are still talking about marriage while she's still married. Ken cooked dinner, gave her a bracelet for her birthday. She said he does everything with the kids. Uh, they go shopping, they go out to eat, they go to ball games, even when she's not there. I don't know, that's their business, child. But what a difference. 
when I look at Mel and the way that she's doing things with her children and not introducing them so soon to, you know, men, uh, look, to each their own, I guess, child. But it's awkward to me watching Ken and Trisha. I don't know why. Maybe because they're new. Maybe because their storyline is just not interesting to me. You know, it's like when Destiny couldn't talk about LaBeric, Trisha keeps talking about this ex-husband, but he's not there. At least we saw LaBeric on the show. But Trisha's husband is a big part of her introductory storyline, and he's invisible. We ain't seen a picture. We ain't seen him. We ain't heard a voice. We just know that things aren't settled. And as I said, when Trisha was introduced to us, it's just not a viewer catching story line for me. And you know, Trisha seems awkward. She really does. I don't think that she's really ready for the reality TV space. She seems nervous, scared to talk or talk funny. I don't know what it is, but I'm not interested in whether Trish and Ken are going to get married. I would like for Trish to get divorced first, and then we talk about that. I think that the main part of her storyline is going to be that she's scared to really go all in with Ken because of what she experienced with the soon-to-be ex-husband. But Trisha then starts to tell Ken about going over to Stormy's house, about the Lovers and Friends Gala, and Martell walked in and acted like he didn't even know her. Ken was shocked and said, oh, he introduced himself like he didn't know you. And for me, it's a made up storyline. It is what it is. I'm just not interested. I can't. But she said that, look, I had just seen him at Target. Ken said we were at his wine launch and Martell is making it seem like Trisha is one of his old creeps. And that's it for me, guys. That's what I think that this is. I think that that is what the producers are trying to sell us. Make it seem like something could have gone on with Trish and Martell, and it's tired already. It really is. Number one, how long are they going to talk about this this season? Are they going to stretch this out? And news flash to everybody, Martell shouldn't even be discussed when it comes to other women or other things. Talk about what's going on currently. The real stuff, this is reality TV with Martell Hope. Quit dressing him up, shoving him out here like he's this catch, like he's this ladies man. We have watched this show from season one, episode one until now, and we know everything that's happened. So if this is what they got to give, like I said at the start of this video, go ahead and take the damn show away. But it ended off with Ken saying that he is looking at other jewelry. He asked her if she liked the bracelet. She said yes. And he let her know that he's looking at engagement rings. But he is waiting on her and the ex-husband to get divorced. She said her and the ex-husband haven't even talked about divorce at all. So Ken is scared. He's been with Trisha for two years and Trisha did admit to him that it is scary talking about marriage. So will Ken stay or will Ken go? Are you guys uh, invested in their story? Is it just me? Is it interesting to you guys? It could be. It's not for me though. Uh, he really wants to know uh, her intentions on marrying him and that's how it ended. So look, we will hear more about that. But that's that guys, when it comes to uh, my breakdown of this past episode, shout out again to the Let Loose Lounge. We discussed this in detail and I needed a little breather before I did my uh, YouTube recap. But I wanna say to you guys, I did hit 10 million views today. Thank you guys so very much for watching my video. Thank you if you are subscribed. If you're not, 
please make sure to do so. Continue to share my videos if you don't mind. The more, the merrier. But your girl is working on a master plan so I can get 10 million more views. So again, I couldn't have done it without you guys. But drop down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about the episode. If you didn't watch it, I rolled over and suffered through it, child, for y'all. Just like Kimmy, I rolled over and suffered through it so I can give you guys this recap. So drop down, let me know your thoughts, and before you go, please make sure to like the video, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. Chat with you guys soon. Bye. Chit chat with QT. Chit chat with QT. Chit chat. Chit chat, chit chat with QT. Chit chat, chit chat, chit chat with QT.